Hello all of you. Uh, Miss Jones Lee has asked me to read um, an extract from the Explorer for the book locker this week. Um, as you listen to this, can you think about um, the, um, the questions uh, it leaves you with and how the author uses the language to describe um, the situation or the scene? Um, this is uh, from chapter one of the Explorer um, Flight. Like a man-made magic wish, the plane began to rise. The boy sitting in the cockpit gripped his seat and held his breath as the plane climbed into the arms of the sky. Fred's jaw was set with concentration and his fingers twitched, following the movements of the pilot beside him, joystick, throttle. The aeroplane vibrated as it flew faster into the setting sun, following the swerve of the river Amazon below them. Fred could see the reflection of the six-seater plane, a spot of black on the vast sweep of blue as it sped towards Manaus, the city on the water. He brushed his hair out of his eyes and pressed his forehead against the window. Behind Fred sat a girl and her little brother. They had the same slanted eyebrows and same brown skin, the same long eyelashes. The girl had been shy, hugging her parents until the last possible moment at the airfield. Now she was staring down at the water, singing under her breath, her brother trying to eat his seatbelt. In the next row, on her own, sat a pale girl with blonde hair down to her waist. Her blouse had a neck ruffle that came up to her chin, and she kept tugging it down and grimacing. She was determinedly not looking out of the window. The airfield they had just left had been dusty and almost deserted, uh, just a strip of tarmac under the, under the ferocious Brazilian sun. Fred's cousin had insisted that he wear his school uniform and cricket jumper, and now, inside the hot airless cabin, he felt like he was being gently cooked inside his own skin. The engine gave a whine and the pilot frowned and tapped the joystick. He was old and soldierly, with brisk nostril hair and grey wax moustache which seemed to reject the usual laws of gravity. He touched the throttle and the plane soared upwards higher into the clouds. It was almost dark when Fred began to worry. The pilot began to belch, quite, first quietly then violently and repeatedly. His hand jerked and the plane dipped suddenly to the left. Someone screamed behind Fred. The plane lurched away from the river and over the canopy. The pilot grunted, uh, gasped and wound back the throttle, slowing the engine. He gave a cough that sounded like a choke. Fred stared at the man. He was turning the same grade of Shea as his moustache. Are, are you all right, sir? He asked. Is there something I can do? Fighting for breath, the pilot shook his head. He reached over to the control panel and cut the engine. The roar ceased. The noise of the plane dipped downwards. The trees rose up. What's happening? asked the blonde girl sharply. What's he doing? Make him stop. The little boy in the back began to shriek. The pilot grasped Fred's wrist hard for a single moment, then his head slumped against the dashboard. And the sky, which had seconds before seemed so reliable, gave way. Thank you. Right.